development, academic growth. I call upon S. Vigneshwari to, develop, to deliver the welcome address. Very good afternoon to one and all gathered here. The science of today is the technology of tomorrow. With this wonderful saying, I hearty welcome to you all for this auspicious program on development of nonlinear optical material for practical device applications. With the blessings of Almighty and our founder, late lion Dr. K. S. Rangasamy, I would like to welcome our respected chairman, Mr. O. Srinivasan in absentia, for being a backbone and a pillar of support. I would like to welcome our enthusiastic Vice Chairman, Mr. R. Srinivasan, Sachin Srinivasan in absentia. To acquire knowledge, one must study, but to acquire wisdom, one must observe to acquire knowledge and wisdom. We are here to hear insights of our chief guest, Mr. Muthusendal Pandian, on behalf of our KSR family. I extend my warm welcome to you, sir, we are grateful to him for accepting our invitation. It's the special moment in welcoming our young and energetic principal, Dr. M. Karthikeyan in absentia, who is the pillar of our KSR KSW. I feel honored to extend my hearty welcome to our HODs. Be a better listener, to be a better speaker is a famous saying. I extend my warm welcome to our faculty members who are in the process of making the future of our country. Now I will halt my words and start with the program. Once again, I welcome you one and all to this wonderful program. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I would like to call upon Manju Boshni, ma'am, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics to deliver the chief guest address. Good afternoon to all. It is an absolute honor to welcome our distinct chief guest, Dr. Mutu Sindhan Pandian, a celebrated figure in the field of physical science and gro critical growth. I'm sorry, crystal growth. Dr. Pandian served as a vice president of an Indian Association for Crystal Growth, IACC, and holds the position of senior research scientist at the SSN Research Center, where he has also served as a research coordinator. He is a fellow of the Academy of Science Chennai and an executive member of International Organization for Crystal Growth with over 26 groundbreaking research projects amounting to rupees 3.45 crores in funding. Dr. Pondian has an illust illustrious academic and research career. He has contributed 219 publications in international journals and presented 413 conference papers and delivered 178 invited lecturers worldwide. His work has been cited over 3,692 times, reflecting on a strong H index of 31 and an I10 index of 104. Dr. Pondian research spans diverse areas such as crystal growth techniques, non-linear optics, solar cell technologies, nanomaterials, and thermoelectric applications. He has guided numerous PhD and postdoctoral fellows with many earning accolades under his membership. Dr. Pondian's remarkable achievements include receiving 37 international and national awards, notably the Sir C. V. Raman Young Scientist Award and recognition from organization like the American Chemical Society and the Royal Society of Chemistry. His expertise has also resulted in six patents showcasing his innovative contribution to science. Today, we are privileged to have Dr. Pandian with us to inspire and guide us with this knowledge and insight. Let us warmly welcome Dr. Muthu Sendal Pandian to the faculty development program. Sir, the session is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for your uh, nice introduction. Some slide change of them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, very good afternoon. 
I am delighted to be here on this wonderful occasion of delivering my Innovator Lecture in this national level faculty development program. And first of all, I would like to thank the convener of this program, Professor Devarajan, and all the organizing committee members of this department for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share my recent research work in universal crystal growth for practical device application. So this is the title of my today's lecture, Development of Nonlinear Optical Materials for Practical Device Application. I myself, Muthu Sandil Pandian, associate with Professor P. Ramasamy. We are from SSN Institution, Chennai. So growth of high quality, large size, with higher physical properties and good crystalline perfection is still a very challenging task for crystal growers by solution growth method. High quality single crystals is of great importance when it comes to the device making. In this lecture, I am going to present a method which gives you the crystals of very high quality. All the crystals, whatever you are going to see in my lecture, are grown by basically three different techniques, namely slow evaporation solution method, SEST. In a very small size beaker, we have grown a lot of technologically important nonlinear optical organic single crystals but we cannot use it directly for the practical device application because when we grow the crystals by SCST, we have to grow only a small seeds. So as a seed crystal, we can use it that the same efficient single crystal we mounted at the bottom of the glass sample, large size glass sample, and we grow the same highly efficient material by another own method called as a Sankranara and Ramasamy method. It is also called as a unidirectional solution crystallization method. So, under identical condition, we have compared the all the SEST and SR method grown crystal, and we have to see what about the physical properties and crystalline perfection of the both the method grown crystal. So this is the outline of my today's lecture and introduction. What are the importance of the single crystal and the crystal growth by conventional method? As I mentioned, in a small size bigger, we have grown a lot of uh, technologically important nonlinear optical organic single crystal. And what are the disadvantages when you grow the crystal by this conventional method? And in order to avoid this issue happened in this conventional method, we have tried this unidirectional solution crystallization method. And what are the advantages when we grow the crystal by this unidirectional method? Under identical condition, we have compared the physical properties like crystalline perfection, optical quality, dielectric permittivity, optical homogeneity, mechanical property of the all the SCST and SR method grown crystal. And in order to identify the crystal growth phenomena of this conventional and SR method, we have tried this sphatography and the magnetic interferometry. In fact, we have tried this in RRK Tindu with the help of Professor Sunil Verma from RRK Tindu. And this is the special material TGS, triglycine sulfate, very good ferroelectric single crystal. And we have grown the crystal at its ferro and a paraelectric facet. And we have compared the physical properties and the crystalline perfection, which faces grown the crystal more suitable for the ferroelectric infrared detector application. And in order to get the high purity and higher crystalline perfection and higher physical properties, and we have made a lot of modification in this conventional SR method, RSR and ISR means rotational Sangana Ramasamy method and immersible Sangana Ramasamy method. And we have successfully fabricated the type 1, type 2 SKG element from our organic formulator from the single crystal. And finally, we compare the all the unidirectional conventional SR, RSR and ISR method grown crystal and then I conclude my lecture. So single crystals forms an indispensable part of rapidly advancing technology. The art of growing these kind of single crystals has turned into science with a variety of wide range of application and a variety of single crystals find application in laser, nonlinear optics, LED, pyro detectors, optical components and so on. So the availability of these kind of single crystal is equal to the ability to rise the country's economy. The ability to grow this kind of single crystal is an essential criteria for the competitiveness of our nation. All these crystals are grown by Sangaraya Ramasamy method, grown in our laboratory, SSN College of Engineering. So these are some of the SR method grown crystal. We can use it for the quartz watches, and these are some of the single crystal for possible application and KTP single crystal for frequency convergent devices, silicon single crystal for the solar cell application, and we can also use this for the laser cutting tools. These are some of the lithium nabate single crystal possible application. 
ஃபியூச்சரல்டு கேஸ் லைட்டர் ஆப்டிக்கல் டேட்டா ஸ்டோரேஜ் டெக்னாலஜி டெலிகம்யூனிகேஷன் இண்டஸ்ட்ரி ஐ ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் த்ரீ லேஸு திஸ் ஆர் சம் ஆஃப் தி போரேட் ஃபேமிலி சிங்கிள் கிரிசல் வி கேன் யூஸ் இட் ஃபார் தி ஃப்ரீக்வன்சி கன்வர்சன் டிவைசஸ் அண்ட் இட் கேன் ஆல்சோ ப்ரொடியூஸ் தி லேசர்ஸ் திஸ் ஆர் தி கட் அண்ட் பாலிசி பிபிஓ அண்ட் எல்பிஓ லேசர்ஸ் So crystal can be grown from solution, melt and vapor technique in which solution and melt techniques are most commonly used for the any kind of practical device application. These are some of the invention of crystal growth methods are available to grow the technologically important single crystal you see from 18th century hydrothermal method, Vernayel method, Zekralski, Bridgman. There are a lot of melt growth techniques, solution growth methods are available to grow the technologically important single crystal. In the present lecture, we are mainly concentrated on this Unidirectional Solution Crystallization Method invented by Professor K. Sankaranarayan and Professor P. Ramasamy when they worked in the Alangapa University Karagudi. So, so far by this method, more than 200 numbers of crystals have been already grown. We can be able to grow the organic single crystal, semi-organic single crystal, inorganic single crystal, positive soluble, negative soluble. All kind of crystal can be possible by this SR method. These are some of the classification of nonlinear optical single crystal. So we can classify it as organic, inorganic and semi-organic. The main advantages of this organic single crystal is we can be able to grow the very high efficient the crystal category in this organic category. But the problem in this organic material is we cannot get the bulk size single crystal. But in the case of inorganic single crystal, we can be able to grow the large size single crystals. But the problem in this inorganic category is due to weak water wall force, we cannot achieve the highly efficient like the organic material. So in order to get the advantages from this organic and inorganic, so now several researchers have tried this semi-organic single crystal. So we can get the both the organic and inorganic advantages. So we can grow the highly efficient with the large size single crystal in this semi-organic category. These are some of the properties needed for the nonlinear optical single crystal. So before we go for the actual single crystal for large size physical properties measurement, crystalline perfection measurement for actual practical device application, we must ensure all the physical properties and the crystalline perfe perfection of the grown crystal should be high nonlinear optical coefficient. For laser application, one must know the laser damage threshold value of the grown crystal. So we have carried out the single and the multi-shot laser damage threshold for the SCST and SRM of the grown crystal and fast optical response time, wide transparency range in the race of UV, visible and IR region. So 200 to 1100 nanometer, the optical transmittance should be very high for any kind of nonlinear optical application. Should be high thermal stability for, uh, should be high mechanical stability and high chemical stability. The ability to process into the crystal and then finally the device fabrication step should be very easy. So what are the basis for the different external shape for the grown crystals by this SEST method? These are some of the factors which affect the morphology of the ground crystal, solution ground crystal, bonding angle, atomic and ionic radius, pH value of the saturated solution, and we prepare the solution for the conventional method, and the super saturation of the solution. These are some of the conventional method ground, 2A, 5 NP, 2 amino, 5 nitro protein derivative single crystals for nonlinear optical application. You see, we, when we grow the crystal by this SEST in a small size beaker, crystallizer or batteries, we can be able to achieve only this much of size by conventional method. But the application point of view, the efficiency of the sum of the crystals are very high, like this 2-amino, 4 nitrophenylated beta toluene sulfonic acid crystals are having 75 times greater than that of the standard reference crystal, KDP, potassium dihydrogen phosphate crystal. But as I mentioned, we cannot use it directly for the practical device application because of the very small in size. Also due to uh, temperature fluctuation of the daily variation, you see the entrapment of solvent molecules into the crystalline matrix is responsible for observing this kind of milky opaques, low angle grain boundaries, and then micro cracks in the conventional method ground crystal, which we cannot avoid in the conventional method. But in the case of SR method, so here what we have done is we cut the crystal from this conventional method and we mount it at the bottom of this glass sample. And then we have to pour the saturated solution inside the glass sample. And then we have to apply the temperature at top and bottom portion. And the top of this temperature is only for solvent evaporation. When the solvent is evaporated at the top of the glass sample solution, so the remaining solid particles are approaching the bottom of the glass sample, the crystal will be grown like this. So this is the crystal grown by conventional method. The same crystal 
we use it as a seed crystal we mount at the bottom of the glass sample and we grow this much of large size single crystal by this fluidization method so these are the as drawn crystal by this uh, sr method and these are the cut and polished vapors so several attempts have been made to grow the crystals by this slow operation method slow cooling method seed rotation and melt growth method like bridgman zegralski flow zone zone melting and flux growth method but all the reported methods are at elevated temperature that leads to thermal induced growth defects and very complicated equipment and difficulty in growing large size single crystal there are also a lot of multi step process also involved when we grow the crystal by this melt growth technique these are some of the conventional method grow tp4 and 4 nitrofen derivative single crystal so normally in conventional method in a beaker the crystal will be grown like this from this single crystal x ray diffraction morphological measurement we have to identify the morphology of the grown crystal whether we wish to grow the crystal along its a direction b direction c direction or different planes or different facet we have to identify before we go for the bulk growth by the solution method so this is one more example for the amp4 n one more four interpolated derivative single crystal so this is a crystal grown by conventional method this is morphology for this unidirectional solution crystallization method we have selected this fast growth axis 001 direction for this bulk growth so these are some of the conventional method grown four nitrofen derivative single crystal for non linear optical application this is the hm t4n this is a two amino four nitrofen four nitrofen single crystal and tp4n single crystal and four amino phenolate single crystal tap and p so these are the very high efficient material for the laser application and these are some of the conventional method grown tracer derivative single crystal and these are some of the conventional method grown non linear optical and ferrodic single crystal for an all sketch and ferroelectric and infrared radar application so these are some of the disadvantages when we grow the crystal by this conventional method due to temperature instability multi nucleation will be formed in the conventional method micro cracks will be formed during the growth there are a lot of micro phase also formed in the conventional method grown crystal and we cannot grow the single and bulk size single crystal in the scst method and because of the gross retard boundaries more number of gross retard boundaries in the conventional method the dislocation density of this conventional grown crystal is always very high this we can easily identify using chemical etching and high char xrd measurement and we cannot get the high uniformity in the conventional method grown crystal and because of the entrapment of solvent inclusion into the crystalline matrix is only responsible for observing this kind of low angle grain boundaries so not only this sulfamic acid and uh, this uh, tgs single crystal almost all the conventional method grown crystals are having these kind of issues like multi nucleation micro cracks milky opaques gross retard boundaries high dislocation density no uniformity solvent inclusions and so on so this is the conventional method grown amp4 and single crystal we focus any one single crystal all the single crystals are having different planes facets gross retard and gross retard boundaries but for application point of view face matchable portion is only useful and other portion will be cutted after cutting the face matching angle for devices like frequency doublers and optical parametric amplifiers face matching needs to be achieved otherwise the conversion efficiency would be very low so in this point of view this sr method has given the solution and it is possible to grow the crystal along its face matching direction so this is the conventional method grown dye glazing barium chloride dye dyed single crystal by conventional method the same crystal we identify the direction 001 direction and we mount at the bottom of the glass sample and we grow this much of large size single crystal by this sr method this is one more attempt we have made this is the ssd gas sodium sulfonate dyed dyed single crystal for non linear optical application this is the crystal grown by conventional method the same crystal we have grown by this sr method this is as grown dye glazing barium chloride dyed dyed single crystal this is the cut and polished vapors from the as grown sr method grown crystal so this is the morphology of this kdp potassium dihydrogen phosphate single crystal so the face matching direction of this kdp potassium dihydrogen phosphate is 15 degree so what we have to done what we have to do is we have to cut the crystal along its face matching direction using fine axa blade and frame and we have to mount at the bottom of the glass sample and we have to pour the saturated solution inside the glass sample when we apply the temperature at top portion of the glass sample the solvent is evaporated then the crystal will be grown like this so this is the green emission produced in the skg directed kdp single crystal grown in rrk into the same kdp crystal grown in our laboratory ssn 
So all the crystals are same. The method is only different. So this is the conventional method grown. Two amino, four nitrogen phenylate, four nitrogen phenylate single crystal. In a beaker, we have grown this crystal. And this is a unidirectional method grown. The same 2 ap 4 and single crystal. The RSR method grown the same 2 ap 4 and single crystal. The difference between this SR and RSR is when we grow the crystal by this SR method grown crystal due to uh, segregated impurities, we cannot grow further uh, maximum 10, 15 centimeter possible by this SR method. But in order to minimize the input segregation in the uh, SR method grown crystal, we have introduced this RSR method. Here what we have done is we made several holes and slats in the RSR glass sample. So we completely rotate the experimental setup of this RSR method with the seed crystal, with the solution, with the glass sample, everything we rotated so that the impurities are pushed out from the glass sample. One can easily minimize the input segregation in the RSR method growth crystal. And if you have compared the physical properties and crystalline perfection of the conventional SR and RSR method growth crystal, and because of the less input segregation in the RSR method, so the physical properties like optical transmittance, mechanical stability, less edema threshold, dielectric permittivity of the RSR method grown crystal is very high, superior compared to the conventional SR and the conventional method grown crystal. This is the ACRT method grown, fine seed rotation technique grown, type 1, type 2 SKG element from this 2A P4 and single crystal. From this crystal, we have successfully fabricated the type 1, type 2 SKG, second harmonic generation base element. So this is the TGS crystal for infrared data application, ferroelectric material. As I mentioned, we cannot use it the entire portion of the conventional method grown crystal. So only the small portion, polar B director will be useful for the higher director application. So here what you have done is we cut the crystal along its polar B direction and we mount at the bottom of the glass sample and we grow this much of large size ferroelectric crystal for higher director application. So remaining 99% percent, 99 will be wasted after cutting this small portion of polar B direction. This is one more glazing possible single crystal for ferroelectric application. Here also, so we have identified the polar B direction, that small portion we identify and we cut along its polar B direction yeah, using, yeah. using fine axe of blade and frame and we grow this much of large as a single crystal by this SR method. So the crystal growth technique for the present investigation, I mainly concentrated on these two different methods, Sankaranara and Ramasami method and the conventional slow evaporation solution growth method. So to grow the crystal by this uh, Sankarana Ramasami method, we have to carefully optimize all these parameters like instrumentation, synthesis and conventional crystal growth, different seed crystal direction, whether we wish to grow the crystal along its A direction, B direction, C direction, or if it is a non ferrosymmetric material, we have to identify the face matching direction, or if it is a ferroelectric material, we have to identify the polar B direction and we have to grow the crystal along its polar B direction by this SR method and different sizes of the glass sample, it mainly depends upon the solubility of your material. If it is a very high soluble, you can choose the very high ID and OD, which means the inner diameter and outer diameter of the glass sample. If it is a very low soluble material, you can choose the very minimum ID and OD for the SR method of crystal growth. And unidirectional growth, growth optimization means we have to maintain two different temperature, one is at top portion and another one is at the bottom portion. And depends upon the Temperature what you have applied at the top and bottom portion and the unidirectional growth and depends upon the glass sample size and the direction, the crystal growth rate will change in the SR method. So the experimental setup of this SR method consists of the glass sample and this glass sample is kept inside this water bath. A thin plate like a seed crystal is mounted at the bottom of the glass sample and then we have to pour the saturated solution inside the glass sample and we have to make the a small hole at the top of the glass sample and then we have to apply the two different temperature, one is top portion and the other one is the bottom portion. After a few hours due to gravity to one concentration, all the solid molecules are approaching the crystal surface directly. So the crystal surface attracts more atoms very easily. So in this conventional SR method, the concentration at bottom portion is very high comparable to the top portion. And then we have to apply the temperature top and bottom portion. This top of this temperature is only for solvent evaporation and this bottom of this temperature is only for growing crystal. So only idea is we have to maintain the uniform temperature between this crystal, seed crystal surface and then solution. The solution and the crystal surface, the temperature should be very uniform. Otherwise, there is large possibilities in the formation of 
multinucleation microcracks milky opaques in the sr method blown crystal to avoid the temperature fluctuation of the daily variation water is frequently added inside this water bath so we have to maintain the uniform water level otherwise we cannot maintain the uniform temperature at top portion so to avoid the fungus growth freshly prepared saturated solution is frequently added inside this sr glass sample so this is the complete expert setup of this sr method depends upon the uh, uh, temperature what you apply at the top and bottom portion and depends upon the solubility the crystal will be grown like this so this is the diglycine barium chloride monohydrate single crystal for non linear optical application grown by this conventional sr method so this is the selection of seed crystal cutting and molding this is the morphology of this tgs crystal triglycine sulfate as i mentioned uh, we cannot use it the entire portion uh, we have to cut the crystal along its polar b direction using fine axa blade and frame and you have to make it as a very small thin plate like a seed crystal and you have to mount at the bottom of the glass sample and then saturated solution is frequently added inside this glass sample so this is a schematic diagram of this sr glass sample this is actual tgs crystal growth is uh, growing crystal is growing inside the glass sample so this is the glass sample and this is the water bath this is the tgs solution and this is the as grown tgs crystal along its polar b direction this is the mounted tgs crystal So, what are the advantages when we grow the crystal by this SR method? Single crystal with specific orientation in a glass sample. So, we wish to grow the crystal along its C direction, B direction, A direction, along whatever direction, whatever plane, whatever facets you want, you can grow by this SR method. So, easily we can find out the growth rate along any plane. So, this is the LIC monohydrochloride single crystal for nonlinear optical application. So this is the morphology of this LIC monohydrochloride. If you wish to identify the growth rate along any different plane, so what you have to do is you have to cut the crystal along its different planes, and we have to make it as a very thin plate like a seed crystal. You have to mount at the bottom of the glass sample. So everything should be identical. So the seed crystal and then glass sample size, ID and OD, inner diameter and outer diameter, saturation solution level, temperature at the top and bottom portion, everything should be identical. then you can easily measure the growth rate along any different plane so 100% solution to crystal convertibility is possible by this method so the entire quantity of the solution is converted to the crystal so this is a 25 cm longest tgs crystal along its polar b direction so with a thin plate like a seed crystal this much of large size crystal can be possible by this sr method so this is a 2 mm thickness of ssd gas sodium sulfate degraded single crystal from this 2 mm thickness one can easily grow this much of large size from 2 mm to 9 cm ssd gas single crystal by this sr method the scaling up was relatively very simple by this method and he is professor p ramasamy one of the inventor of this sakranarayan ramasamy method and he is holding the organic benzophenate single crystal for non linear optical application So normally in conventional method the crystal will be grown like this the embryo will be formed in the conventional method beaker and then yeah, from this small nucleation the crystal will be grown like this from millimeter then micrometer sorry micrometer millimeter then centimeter then meter suppose this is the phase matching direction of your grown crystal so if you see this is the one day grow this is the two day grow this is the three day four day five day six day seven day you see there will be no uniformity in the conventional method grown crystal but in the case of sr method it is a layer by layer growth so comparable to this conventional method the uniformity of this conventional method grown crystal sorry sr method grown crystal is superior and very high comparable to the conventional method grown crystal this we have confirmed with the bayer princess measurement so the requirement of large size crystal growth chamber is avoided in this sr method so if you construct this uh, sr method in your ug laboratory pg laboratory or phd research laboratory you need only 5 to 6000 rupees for making for constructing this sr method you need only this 1 ft cross 1 ft water bath this water bath is nothing but the normal fish tank only and then one glass sample and two uh, kanthal wire one is at top portion and another one is at the bottom portion two rtd temperature controller with a sensor and two ammeter and two transformer so within 5 to 6000 rupees one can easily construct this sr method in your laboratory you see this is the 
Seed crystal of SSD gas, sodium sulfate dihydride single crystal in a beaker, we have grown this crystal. Using the single crystal X-ray diffraction, we identify the morphology. So we try to grow the crystal along its C direction because the growth rate along this direction, C direction is very high comparable to the all the other direction. So using this SR setup, we cut the crystal using the fine axe blade and frame at its C direction, this portion, and we mount at the bottom of the glass sample and we pour the solution and we grow. This much of large size 9 centimeter uh, length and 2.5 centimeter diameter of the same SSD gas single crystal by this same experimental setup, SR method. So this is the as grown SSD gas single crystal and this is the cut and polished vapors. So not only cylindrical shape depends upon the shape of the crucible, any shape can be possible by this SR method. This is the organic benzophenone single crystal using xylene as a solvent. This is the cut and polished vapors. And this much of large size benzophenone single crystal can be possible by this SR method. So a thin layer of solution in between the crystal and the glass sample. So there will be no mechanical stress into the SR method ground crystal. So length to breadth ratio can be varied at with a stoichiometric solution. So normally in a beaker by conventional method, the KDP crystal will be grown like this. When we change the pH of the solution in SR method, one can increase or decrease the growth rate along its different direction. So this is the crystal grown by conventional method, KDP potassium radiation phosphate single crystal for laser application. The same crystal we grow by this SR method. This is the, you see, the C direction from this conventional method to the SR method. The growth rate along C direction is very high when we change the pH of the solution. So crystals which have post flow cracking tendency can be grown without resetting the post flow cracking tendency. So this is the conventional method grown 2 amino 5 chlorobenzabine single crystal for nonlinear optical application. The SKG efficiency of this single crystal is 17 times greater than that of the standard potassium dihydrogen phosphate single crystal. When we grow the crystal by this conventional method, because of the temperature fluctuation, so a small internal stress will be formed in the conventional method grown crystal that causes the large number of micro cracks, milky opaques in the conventional grown crystal. But in the case of SR method grown crystal, we have applied the temperature, uniform temperature at top and bottom portion. So uniform solvent evaporation, stable supersaturation, there is no possibility in the formation of multinucleation, milky opaques and micro cracks in the SR method grown crystal. So the crystal quality is always superior to the conventional method grown crystal. This we have confirmed with several characterization like high char XRD, Bayer Vingens, chemical etching, optical transmittance, UV SNIR, Vickers micro and so on. So as I mentioned so far by this method, more than 200 numbers of crystals have been already grown. So we can able to grow the organic, inorganic, semi-organic category. And we can also grow the crystal from its low soluble like KAP, 12.5 gram per 100 ml, and moderate soluble like TGS, 34 gram per 100 ml, and very, very, very high soluble like benzophenone, 265 gram per 100 ml. So all category can be possible by this eudirational solution crystallization method. So this is a low soluble KAP, and moderate soluble TGS, and this is a very high soluble benzophenone single crystal, and this is the negative soluble lithium sulfate. These are all the positive soluble material, this is the negative soluble material. So based on our experience in this unidirectional crystallization method, we have attempted to grow the world's longest solution code crystal, and we have successfully grown this much of large size, 135, 135 centimeter length and 5.5 centimeter diameter crystal. In fact, we have initiated this work in 2007 when I joined as a PhD student and we have successfully completed this work in 2011 and we have reported in 2012 with the help of Professor G. Bhavan Arayana when we, they have worked in the National Physical Laboratory, CSA and National Physical Laboratory in New Delhi. So with the help of Professor G. Bhavan Arayana, we have completed and we have reported in this journal. So this is the experimental setup of this 8 feet SR setup. So we mounted the seed crystal at the bottom of the glass sample here and we maintain one temperature at the bottom portion and we maintain one more temperature at the top portion for solvent evaporation. So this is the total length is 8 feet and we pour the solution from this top of the glass sample. When the crystal is growing from this bottom to top, we can we have to also raise the level of the heating coil from the bottom to top as I mentioned. We have to maintain the uniform temperature between the crystal and the solution interface. So 
this much of transparent large size single crystal can be possible by the cesar method so this is the morphology of this benzophenone so we have selected this a direction 100 direction for the longest growth because the growth rate along this direction is very high comparable to the all the other direction this is the different growth changes of this world's longest benzophenone single crystal so the transparent portion is charted here so this is the 85 cm longest benzophenone this is the 1350 mm longest benzophenone single crystal from this sr method this is a double refraction pattern from this benzophenone single crystal so similarly we have grown large number of nonlinear optical and ferrolite single crystal by this conventional method also by the conventional sr method then how to harvest the crystal from the glass sample so this is the 25 cm longest TGS single crystal, ferrolite single crystal along its polar B direction. As I mentioned, we have to maintain the uniform temperature at top and bottom portion. Normally, we maintain the temperature at top portion like 38, 39, and 40 degrees Celsius. So we have to reduce like 0.1 degrees Celsius per day or 0.01 degrees Celsius per hour. Similarly, so we have to maintain for all the crystal growth run, and we have to wait until it reaches the room temperature. Once it reaches the room temperature, we have to keep it from this water bath. So this is the entire crystal inside the glass sample, also inside the water bath. So this is the crystal inside the glass sample. So using this diamond wheel cutter, we have to remove the top and bottom portion separately. And this is the 25 cm longest TGS crystal along its polar B direction with the glass sample. And using the glass cutter, we have to remove the top and bottom portion separately. so this is the 25 cm longest tgs crystal without any glass sample you see there is no micro cracks milky way effects in the sr method grown crystal because we have maintained the uniform temperature stable super saturation uniform growth growth rate this, so there is no chance in the formation of all this defect structure in the sr method grown crystal now how to cut the crystal for any application or characterization so this is the diamond potter wheel cutter we have Uh, supported by dae bearness so before we go for the crystal cutting you have to measure the uh, mechanical stability of your grown crystal using wickers micro hardness measurement whether your crystal belongs to the mechanically low moderate or very mechanically very highly stable material and depends upon the mechanical stability of your material you can increase or decrease the speed of the diamond potter wheel cutter and ethylene glycol is kept inside this tray and ethylene glycol is used as a pull on material so this is the cut portion of this tgs crystal the diamond coated wheel cutter is cutting the sr method grown tgs crystal and this is almost cut portion of this tgs crystal and this is a cut portion this is as grown tgs crystal from this sr method so this is that 25 cm longest tgs crystal this is at its bottom portion and middle portion and this is the top portion now we are going to see the some of the technologically important nonlinear optical and ferrolite single crystal so this is the sodium sulfide dihedral single crystal about 9 cm length and 2.5 cm diameter and this is the cut and polished vapors of the same sld gas single crystal for nonlinear optical application and this is the diglazine zinc chloride dihedral single crystal for nonlinear optical application so this is a unidirectional method grown crystal inside the glass sample and this is the cut and polished vapors for the sklc application and this is the two amino four nitrile filament single crystal for nonlinear optical application and this is as grown crystal and this is the cut and polished vapor and using this uh, nylon cloth we have polished the our conventional and sr with the grown crystal and this is the glazing phosphate single crystals and we have selected the polar b direction for the longest growth so this is the unidirectional method grown glazing phosphate single crystal and this is the cut and polished wafers and this is the cut and polished wafers of the glazing phosphate and this is the two amino fine nitrile protein beta toluene sulfonic acid single crystal for nonlinear optical application this is the crystal inside the glass sample and this is the crystal without glass sample so this we have grown in a slow cooling method so we have prepared the solution in 50 degrees celsius and we have reduced it to 35 degrees celsius with a cooling rate of 5 na 2 degrees celsius per hour from this slow cooling sr method we have grown this much of large size single crystal and this is a low soluble kp potassium dihydrogen phosphate single crystal and this is a moderate soluble tgs single crystal 
and this is the crystal ground by conventional method. This is the crystal ground by SR method, and this is the cut and polished vapors. And this is the cut and polished vapors of the TG single crystal. And this is a sodium para nitrofilled single crystal for nonlinear optical application. So this is the crystal ground by conventional method, and we have selected this 0, 0, 001 direction fast growth axis for the unidirectional method. And this is the diglycine barium chloride monohydrate single crystal for nonlinear optical application. So this is the alkaline crystal. This is the cut and polished vapors. This is a lab L-arginine four nitrofilled four nitrofilled single crystal inside the glass sample, and this is the outside the glass sample, and these are the cut and polished vapors. And this is the ammonium tartrate single crystal inside the glass sample, outside the glass sample, and this is the cut and polished vapors. So similarly, we have grown large number of uh, nonlinear optical and ferrous single crystal, and ditto we have grown the crystal by SEST. And we identify the uh, direction of the grown crystal using single crystal X-ray diffraction measurement, and we grow the same crystal by this conventional uh, SR method, Sagana Ramasami method. And in order to check the crystalline perfection of the grown crystal, and we have selected this high resolution X-ray diffraction measurement using the full width at half maximum. You can easily identify the crystalline perfection of the grown crystal. And using this chemical etching measurement, one can easily identify the Dislocation density of your grown crystal and the single and multi share less than threshold we have performed to identify the less than threshold value of a grown crystal for this laser application. And to check the mechanical stability of your SES in the SRM of the grown crystal, and we have selected this bigger micro harness measurement for optical quality, UV SNIR, for electrical measurement, yeah. dielectric permittivity, and dielectric loss, for optical homogeneity, we have performed the biofluorescence measurement. So samples were prepared with identical thickness. Samples means crystal grown by this SEST and SR method grown crystals were prepared with the identical thickness. The surface damage is affected by the energy absorbing defects such as strains, scratches, and the polishing contaminants, which strongly influence the physical properties. Therefore, all the characterizations were performed on the very high polished crystals so that one can easily minimize the any kind of surface defects in the conventional SR method grown crystal. In order to confirm the irreproducibility, all the characterizations were repeated several times and more or less similar crystals have been observed for the SCST and SR method grown crystal. To check the crystalline perfection, we have performed the high charge X-ray measurement. This is for the sulfamic acid single crystal. And there are a lot of um, low angle grain boundaries are appeared for the uh, conventional method grown crystal. The entrapment of solvent molecules into the crystalline matrix is only responsible for appearing this kind of low angle grain boundaries in the conventional method grown crystal. But in the case of SR method grown crystal, full width at the half maximum of this SR method grown sulfur make acid single crystal is 5.5 hours again. And the single and very sharp peak, which clearly indicates that the crystalline perfection of this SR grown crystal is superior comparable to the conventional method grown crystal. This is one more example. This is for the SR method grown SSD gas, sodium sulfur dihydride single crystal for nonlinear optical application. The FWH full width at half maximum of that pink color crystal. SSD gas single crystal is 17 R second, which clearly indicates that the crystalline perfection of this SR grown crystal is superior comparable to the conventional mother grown SSD gas single crystal. And the chemical etching is an important and powerful tool to identify the dislocation density of the SEST and SR mother grown crystal. And this is a diglycine zinc chloride diode single crystal for nonlinear optical application. And this is for the conventional method grown crystal, and this is for the SR method grown crystal. You see, the number of H bits in the conventional grown crystal is more because of the gross return boundaries, but in the case of SR grown crystal, it is less. So, the approximate H bit density of this conventional grown crystal is 5.2 into 10 power 2 centimeter per minus 2, but in the case of SR method grown crystal, it is very less comparable to the conventional method grown crystal because here no gross return boundaries in the SR method grown crystal, single and morphological defined facet, which causes the very low uh, H bit density. And this is for the sodium sulfate dihydride single crystal, and this is for the conventional method grown crystal, and this is for the SR method grown crystal, and this is for 5 seconds, this is for 10 seconds. And successive etching for the 5 to 10 seconds, the H bits enlarge the size, retaining the geometrical shape. And do not disappear, suggesting that the bits are due to the dislocation. The number of H bits in the conventional mother grown crystal is very high comparable to the SR mother grown crystal because of the large number of dislocation density and the more number of micro cracks, milky opaques, 
grow certain boundaries and so on. But in the case of uh, SR mother grown crystal, no micro cracks, milky opaques, and less dislocation density in the SR mother grown crystal. So these are the various type of defects observed in the conventional mother grown TGS crystal, like solvent dilution, low angle grain boundaries, micro cracks, milky opaques, and microcrystallites. It has been already reported that the dislocations have been originated from the grosser boundary. But in the case of SR mother grown crystal, as I mentioned, single and uh, very single and uh, morphological different facets. So there is no grosser boundaries, different plane facets in the SR mother grown crystal that causes the higher crystalline perfection in the SR mother grown crystal. To check the mechanical stability of the CSCST and SR mother grown crystal, we have performed the Vickers micro hardness measurement. This blue color indicates for the SR mother grown crystal and red color indicates for the conventional mother grown crystal. And because of the higher uh, crystalline perfection, no solvent inclusions in the SR mother grown crystal, the mechanical stability of this SR grown crystal is high, like 64.3 for SSD single crystal. But in the case of conventional mother grown SSD single crystal, it is bit less, 58.2 kilogram per millimeter square. This is one more example for glazing phosphate also so higher mechanical stability comparable to the conventional method grown crystal because of the uh, no solvent inclusion and higher crystalline perfection in the SR method grown crystal. And the number of micro cracks produced in near the indentation is very high in the uh, SR method grown crystal comparable to the conventional method grown crystal because of the higher mechanical stability. So more number of micro cracks are appeared in near the indentation in the SR method grown crystal comparable to the conventional method grown crystal. So this is the 25 centimeter long TGS crystal. To check the homogeneity of this SR method grown crystal, so we selected the bottom, middle, and top portion. We checked the Vickers micro harness number. So the Vickers micro harness number at its bottom, middle, and top portion for the SR method grown TGS crystal is more or less similar. So the reason for observing this kind of low mechanical stability in the conventional method grown crystal is only solvent inclusion and a variety of parameters such as variations in super saturation, minor fluctuation in temperature, non-uniform growth rates are governed by solvent inclusion. So this is a sodium chloride, this is a potassium chloride solvent inclusion pattern. These are some of the inclusion pattern observed in our SSN conventional method grown crystal, diglycine zinc chloride, high glycine oxalate, TGS, sodium bromate, glazing phosphate, and elargenine hydrofluorate. But in the case of SR method, as I mentioned, we have maintained the uniform temperature at top and bottom portion. So uniform solvent evaporation, uniform stable supersaturation. So there is no chance in the formation of solvent inclusion in the SR method ground crystal. And we have carried out the single and multi shot laser method threshold for the our SEST and SR method ground crystal. And because of the higher crystalline perfection, no solvent inclusion, higher mechanical stability, the less than a threshold value of this SR method grown, that pink color crystal, SSD single crystal, was 17 millijoule per centimeter square. But in the case of this conventional method grown crystal, because of the large number of solvent inclusion in the uh, conventional method grown crystal and the large number of dislocation density, the less than a threshold value of the SSD single crystal was 12 millijoule per centimeter square. This is one more example for this world's longest benzene and single crystal and we cut and we make it as a very thin plate like a seed crystal and, and we check the less than the threshold value for the conventional and SR mother grown benzene and single crystal because of the higher uh, dislocated density, large number of solvent inclusion, the 15 millijoule per centimeter squared for the conventional mother grown benzene and single crystal. But in the case of SR mother grown crystal, as I mentioned, no solvent inclusion and higher crystalline perfection. The less than threshold value of this SR grown crystal is superior comparable to the conventional mother grown crystal. And the dielectric permittivity and dielectric loss we have carried out in the RRK Tindu. And this is the gold coated TGS crystal we have performed in RRK Tindu. So this is the TGS crystal. So the dielectric permittivity of a crystalline material is a second rank tensor for orthorhombic crystal. There are three independent components for monoclinic crystal. There are four independent components. To check the anisotropic in the dielectric behavior, we have selected this uh, orthorhombic SSD single crystal. From this SR mother grown SSD single crystal, we cut the crystal along its A, B, and C direction. And we have measured the dielectric permittivity and the dielectric loss value for the conventional SR mother grown crystal. So anisotropic in the dielectric behavior was observed for the SR mother grown, this SSD single crystal. 
this blue color indicates for the a axis and this red color indicates for the b axis and this green color indicates for the c axis so higher dielectric permeability and a lower dielectric loss which clearly indicates that the crystalline perfection and optical quality of this sr method grown crystal is superior comparable to the small size single crystal grown by conventional method so this is that tgs single crystal so the curie point of this tgs triglycine sulfide is 49 degree so below this 49 degree the crystal belongs to the ferroelectric phase after this 49 degree the crystal belongs to the ferroelectric phase and we have successfully grown the crystal at its ferro and the para phase and we compare the physical properties and the crystalline perfection of the ferro and the ferroelectric phase that grown tgs single crystal so this is the temperature dependent tgs single crystal grown by conventional and sr method when the temperature increases and dielectric permeability also increases and having maximum dielectric permeability at 49 degree at its curie point so higher dielectric permeability and lower dielectric loss in the sr method grown tgs crystal which clearly indicates that the sr grown crystal is having higher optical quality to check the optical quality of this conventional sr method grown crystal and we have performed the uv scenario measurement so this area we have performed the optical transmittance measurement you see the surface both SEAC and SR method surface is visibly seeing both are very transparent but the microscopic images says the conventional method grown crystal is having very high roughness because of the solvent inclusion micro cracks milky opaques and high number of dislocation density but in the case of SR method grown crystal no solvent inclusion micro cracks milky opaques and less number of hp density the surface is smooth comparable to the conventional method grown crystal that causes the higher output intensity in the sr method grown crystal that causes the higher optical transmittance you see eight percent is higher optical transmittance are appeared for the sr method grown glycine phosphate single crystal comparable to the conventional method grown glycine phosphate because of the higher output intensity but in the case of conventional method grown crystal large number of scattering centers that causes the low output intensity that causes the low optical transmittance in the conventional method grown crystal here 11 percent is higher optical transmittance in the sr method grown diglycine zinc chloride single crystal and if you have performed the optical homogeneity of this uh, conventional sr method grown that pin color crystal sr degree single crystal the optical homogeneity also very high comparable to the conventional method grown crystal so from this observation one can easily conclude that the gross center boundaries and the solvent inclusion scattering centers micro cracks milky openings and a large number of dislocation density in the conventional method grown crystal that causes the low physical properties and low crystalline perfection but in the case of sr method grown crystal is there is no gross dark boundaries no solvent inclusion no scattering center no micro cracks no milky opaques and less dislocation density which causes the higher physical properties like higher optical transmittance higher mechanical stability higher dielectric permeability and crystalline perfection also we have checked using hsr xrd and chemical etching measurement and we have a uh, very low full width at half maximum which clearly indicates that the crystalline perfection of the sr method grown crystal is very high comparable to the conventional method grown crystal and then this growth phenomena we collaborated with rrk tindur we have successfully done using this benzophenol single crystal and we have selected this benzophenone along its ca direction and we mount at the bottom of this borosilicate glass sample and we have performed the real time and in situ optical imaging of concentration and convection field during the unidirectional growth of benzene crystal and a stratigraphic technique is used to visualize the convection to quantify the thickness of the solidial boundary layer and the crystal growth rate the maxedo interferometry is used to quantify the gravity driven concentration profile in the sr method of crystal growth so this is the actual experiment setup we have used for the imaging technique and we mount a seed crystal at the bottom of this borosilicate glass sample and we pour the solution and we carry out the imaging technique so this is a step one and this is a step two and we mount at the bottom of the glass sample the benzophenone single crystal along its a direction 100 direction and pour the benzophenone solution inside the borosilicate glass sample you see this is a mounted seed crystal and the roughness is started and the transparent portion is started we capture the image between the crystal and the solution interface you see the concentration at bottom portion is very high comparable to the top portion after 11 days the plumes are started from the bottom of the glass sample the plume is nothing but the movement of fluid flow from the high concentration to low concentration the crystal is started growing at its uh, 12 days time 
So if you concentrate the any one fumes, all the fumes are shorted from the bottom of the glass sample. Suppose if we concentrated this plume, the plume is moving up, moving up, moving up, moving up. Then the plume is disappeared, then new plumes are shorted from the bottom of the glass sample. From this uh, shadowgraphy and the mesoderm interferometry, one can easily conclude that the gravity dependent concentration is only responsible for the growth of the crystal by this SR method. And we have made several modifications in order to avoid the multinucleation input disaggregation in the SR method glass sample. When we use the acetone ethanol methanol kind of solvent, the multinucleation will be formed at the top of the SR glass sample. In order to avoid the multinucleation formation at the top of this glass sample, we have introduced this glass pend. Using this glass pend, one can easily minimize or easily avoid the multinucleation formation, spurious formation at the uh, bottom of the glass sample. From this modification, we have successfully grown this two amino finiter protein derivative single crystal for nonlinear optical application. So this is the crystal grown by conventional method. From this modification, we have successfully grown the crystal, the same crystal by this SR method, and this is the cut and budget wafers. Now we are going to see the fine seed rotation technique. This is schematic diagram. So this is the actual four nitrogen derivative single crystal. We cut and polish, and we mount here in the Teflon sheet and rod. So this is a two liter solution container. This is a five liter solution container. This much of large size crystal can be possible by this uh, fine seed rotation technique. So we have to optimize the cooling rate in the fine seed rotation technique if it is a new material. So initially we have maintained the 0.1 degree Celsius per day and we increased it to 0.2 degree Celsius and then 0.5 degree Celsius. When we maintain the 0.5 degree Celsius, you see there are a lot of spurious nucleation are formed at the bottom of the um, this beaker. Also, there are more number of micro cracks that appeared in the conventional grown crystal. So they optimized the cooling rate of this fine seed rotation grown four nitrogen derivative single crystal is 0.2 degree Celsius. This is the crystal grown by this fine seed rotation technique. This much of large size crystal can be possible by this fine seed rotation technique. So we are selected to harvest the type 1, type 2 SKG element and we are successfully made in the RRK Tindu. From this four nitrogen derivative single crystals, we have successfully fabricated this element. So when we grow the crystal by this conventional SR method, there is no chance in the formation of impurities are go out in the SR method glass sample and outside the glass sample. In order to avoid the impurity segregation in the SR method, we have introduced this RSR method, rotational Sagana Ramasami method, with the slat and with the tube. So here, what we have done is we completely rotate the Exploded setup of this RSR method with the slat and with the tube. So we mount the seed crystal at the bottom of the glass sample. So we rotate the complete exploded setup of this RSR method so that the impurities are pushed up from the glass sample, from inside the glass sample to outside the glass sample. One can easily minimize the input segregation in the RSR method grown crystal. So this is a different growth stages of this RSR method with the slag and this is the RSR method with the tube. So this is the as grown crystal, this is a cut and polish wafer. So this is the four nitrogen derivative single crystal for nonlinear optical application. We have grown in a beaker. This method is called a SEST, slow evaporation solution growth method. From this method, we have grown this crystal and this is a crystal grown by the same crystal grown by the SR method and the same crystal grown by this RSR method. This is the cut and polished wafers. To check the crystalline perfection of the SEST and the SR method and RSR method grown crystal, we have used the high char X-ray, high resolution X-ray diffraction. Because of the more number of uh, micro cracks, milky opaques, solvent inclusion, and then gross reduction boundaries, the FWHM full width at a half maximum of this SEST method grown crystal is 56.5 hours again. But in the case of SR method grown crystal, here we can restrict the gross reduction boundaries to the single and the morphological different phases. But in the case of impurities or segregation is more in the conventional SR method grown crystal. We cannot avoid in this conventional SR method. So FWHM of this SR method grown crystal is 45.5 hours again. But still there are a lot of impurities are segregated in this conventional SR method. In order to avoid, sorry, we cannot avoid input segregation in the RSR method. We can be able to minimize the input segregation in the RSR method. So here you see the FWHM full width at the half maximum of this RSR method grown crystal is 30 hours again. 
here no growth center boundaries no faces no planes single planes and faced and the, the input segregation is minimized here so the crystalline perfection is improved but in the case of conventional sr method because of the input segregation 45.5 r second but in the case of conventional method grown crystal large number of uh, micro cracks milky opaques and more um, dislocation density more gross center boundaries the fwhm is very high so very high fwhm so moderate and very low fwhm which clearly indicates that the crystalline perfection of this rsr method grown crystal is very high and superior comparable to the conventional laser and conventional method grown crystal so this is the comparison between the conventional laser and rsr method grown crystal because of the less impurity segregation in the rsr method so higher optical transmittance and higher mechanical stability and higher less damage threshold and this is the immersible ambul sangraya ramasami method here we mount the seed crystal and we pour the 2 liter of solution so we grow the crystal by slow cooling method so this is the complete experimental setup of this isr method grown crystal so we mount the crystal at the bottom of the glass sample and we pour the solution we cool the temperature from 50 degrees celsius to room temperature and we grow this much of large size single crystal by this isr method grown crystal so this is as grown crystal this is the cut and polish it wafers to check the crystalline perfection at its bottom middle and top portion we have carried out the full width at half maximum high sir excited measurement so fwhm at its bottom middle and top portion is more or less same which clearly indicate that the optical homogeneity of this isr method grown crystal is superior so the final summary of my lecture is we have selected the several technologically important non linear optical and ferro optic single crystal initially we have grown the crystal by this scsg method slow evaporation solution growth method in a very small size crystal crystallizer we have grown large number of single crystal and we identify the direction of the crystal using the single crystal x-ray diffraction so very high efficient method only we have selected and we grow by this sr method we mount the seed crystal at the bottom of the glass sample we pour the solution into the sr method glass sample and we grow large size crystal by this sr method but still there are lot of impurities are segregated in this conventional sr method which we have to avoid we, when we grow the crystal by the non linear optical application this can be done in the rsr method in the case of rsr method what we have done is we made several holes and were several slats in the rsr method we completely rotate the experimental setup of this rsr method with the seed crystal with the solution with the glass sample so one can easily minimize the input segregation in the rsr method grown crystal under identical condition we have compared the rsr and conventional sr method grown crystal and rsr method grown crystals are having higher optical transmittance higher mechanical stability higher dielectric permeability higher optical homogeneity and higher crystalline perfection comparable to the conventional laser and conventional method grown crystal so this rsr method grown crystal is more suitable for the any kind of optical or ferro optic infrared application comparable to the all the two method so thank you very much for your kind attention if any question i am very happy to respond to thank you very much thank you for this wonderful session sir if you have any queries about this session you can ask over here feedback form has been sent kindly fill it and send to us as soon as possible next i would like to call upon r preetha to deliver vote of thanks good afternoon all Gratitude is the fairest blossom which springs from the soul. It's my privilege and honor to extend a vote of thanks on this memorable occasion. First and foremost, I'd like to express my heartfelt gratitude to our special guest Muthu Sendal Pandian, research scientist, for gracing us with their presence and sharing their invaluable insights. Your words have truly inspired and enlightened us all, sir. A special thanks to our principal, HOD, and faculty members for this grateful session. I would also like to extend my thanks to our organizing committee who have worked behind the scenes to make the session a grand success. Thank you students for your cooperation on today's session. Thank you all.
feedback. Ma'am, please send the feedback form. Ma'am, thank you very much. దగ్గర ఒక హాల్ హాల్ చెప్పాలి సరిపోతుంది <laughs> 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 